Lynn asked in a comment, how do I run globally scalable web apps on Google Cloud with a minimum of maintenance required? Great question, Lynn. I will base my answer to your question on my personal experience. Some of my applications have served hundreds of thousands of users per day. And like you, I always want to minimize maintenance, so I will use serverless tools only. Lynn mentioned scalable web apps. There are at least two ways to build those. Some web apps compose custom HTML on the server for each request. To serve more users, you need to add more server resources. This is a proven way of doing things that works well. Django, Laravel, Ruby on Rails, and other backend frameworks do this. We'll talk about how to use those frameworks on Google Cloud in another episode. In this episode, we'll use the second approach. We'll skip server-side rendering of HTML. The logic for building the user interface will run in the web browser instead. I usually use the View framework for this, but you might use React, Angular, Svelte, or any other front-end framework. This video will show you how to use any of those frameworks with Google Cloud. This second approach scales well, because the server only needs to send static files to users. And those static files can be served by a content delivery network, or CDN, which means even less load on your server and even better scalability. Now, the web browser still needs to talk to the server every now and then to read data or to write data. The server exposes APIs using REST or GraphQL to make that happen. All right, how would we host one of these Vue, React, Angular, or Svelte web apps on Google Cloud? And how would we do it in a low maintenance, serverless way? Remember, we have two components, static files and an API backed by server-side code. There are three architectures that I've personally used and that I really like. I will share them with you now. I will also share what I think are the pros and cons of each one. And there will be a bonus tip for each architecture. Then you can make up your own mind about which one is right for you. Let's get started. Architecture number one uses Firebase hosting for the static files, Firebase functions for APIs, and a database. I usually use Firestore if I need a non-relational database, or Cloud SQL if I need a relational database. But there are many other options. First bonus tip, if you use Firestore, you don't have to implement as many APIs yourself. Firestore has its own API that web browsers can call. Firestore can also push updates to browsers when data changes in the database. All right, pros and cons. This architecture will scale well globally. That's because Firebase hosting has a built-in CDN. And the best part is you don't have to configure it. It just works. You will also deploy your static files and your API with a single command. That means less risk of a half-deployed release. The drawback is that the API has to be built in JavaScript or TypeScript. That's not been a problem for most of my apps, but many backend developers prefer Python, Java, Go, or something else. Not to worry, we have something for them too. Architecture number two uses Firebase hosting for the static files, just like before, but Cloud Run for the APIs. Second bonus tip, this and the previous architecture will serve your static files and your APIs from different domains by default. To avoid having to deal with cross-origin resource sharing, also known as course, you can configure Firebase hosting to put a single domain in front of both your static files and your API. All right, pros and cons. This architecture has the same CDN advantage as the previous one. But thanks to Cloud Run, you can implement your API in any language. The main drawback, in my experience, is that you will need to use two deployment commands, one to deploy your static files and another to deploy your API. If one deployment fails, maybe because of a bug in your code, and the other succeeds, your app could end up in a bad state. Architecture number three uses Cloud Run both for hosting the static files and for the API. Third bonus tip, if you like Docker containers, this is the architecture for you. Pros and cons. With this architecture, you get a single deployment command. I like that. 
Also, your entire application will be packaged up in a Docker container that's easy to test and to move around between environments. But you don't get the nice built-in CDN with this approach. That's OK if your users are based in one country or in a few neighboring countries. Uh, just deploy your app in a Google data center close to them. Uh, also, it won't matter if you prefer to set up and fine tune the CDN yourself. Well, there you have it. Weigh the pros and cons of each architecture and see which one is right for you. What is your favorite way of hosting web applications on Google Cloud? Is it one of these three or something completely different? Or perhaps you have questions about this episode. Either way, let me know in the comments. Thanks for joining me and see you next time. Oh,